Lord. Good looks, good looks, good looks, good looks, good looks. Hey, shout out to everybody who pulled up. Hope everybody's having a good, good time. You guys heard the intro though, right? You guys heard the intro. That's all that matters. Shout out to everybody who pulled up. But um, listen, before we get into that, got gotta 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 shout out the new members of the channel, man. We got two new members. We got ONT6 Soldier. He's been an OG of the channel for a long, long part of time, man. And Nana and Papa Raider, shout out to you guys for the new members, uh, becoming new members of the channel. If you guys don't know, that is part of the perks of becoming a member. You get shouted out in the video or in the live when you become a member of the channel, as well as a bunch of other perks that you get, like emojis and a bunch of stuff like that. But shout out to you guys now. Listen, you guys, we got a few new things. We got a few new things to talk about. You guys heard the intro. Perfect. Hey, shout out to uh, it was OG. Shout out to OG. He was the one that told me I was muted. But look, I got ourselves a series. What the fuck? Did I lose that paper? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I got ourselves a series of plays for us to look at today. Um, Man, Divine Diablo. Listen. With this new coaching staff, with uh, Rob Bryan being coming in as a assistant to the defense, you have Antonio Pierce as your linebackers coach, Jason Simmons and Chris Ash running things with the defensive back room. There's been a few questions, right? Will Divine Diablo be a safety? Will he be a linebacker? What will he do? And I hope to answer your guys' questions on that because I have some film where in the beginning of the season, he was at safety and we're going to look at that film and we're going to look over that see how you guys uh feel about it shout out to kyle holt is in the building um another thing if you guys uh don't know when you do have the membership your name is highlighted for me to see so it is easier to read comments as well but without further ado you guys without further ado you guys let's get in to the film study. Let me change the background really quick. You know what? We'll be in the stadium today. We'll be in the stadium today. But let's get straight into it. Now, this is the Chargers game. This is our, sorry, this is the Miami Dolphins game where he had a bunch. He had a bunch of snaps at safety this game. Um, and we're going to get into that because that's one of the main topics of discussion. Can he play safety? Can he play linebacker? Where will he be in this new defense? So, We'll get into that as well. And really quick, if you uh if you want to become a member, I think the link is uh right there in the chat now. So you could do that if you'd like. But let's get straight into it. And play number one, we have Divine Diablo lined up right here for you guys. He is on the line of scrimmage next to Quentin Jefferson. This is how Gus Bradley decided to uh line it all up. But let's get into it, right? Let's get show. Let's show you guys what Divine Diablo did on the line of scrimmage as a blitzer, starting off hot as a blitzer. Gets back there, but Jacoby Brissett does get the ball out pretty damn quick. We'll see it from another angle here. You got Divine Diablo. You got to overload to the strong side. Obviously, the strong side is wherever the running back or the tight end is going to be lined up. So. Gus Bradley decides to have Quinn Jefferson, Divine Diablo on the right of the quarterback and four guys to the left of Jacoby Brissett. Let the play rock out and boom, he goes in on a blitz, Liam Eichenberg. And guess what? Yannick Ngakwe did a good job getting back there. Still got 
to the quarterback anyways, but it is what it is. So that was play number one. The next play I have for you guys here is, let me pull it up, 31.56. So boom. Let's get into it. Right here, you got Divine Diablo now lined up at linebacker, which is essentially where I feel like he'll be, okay? You got Divine Diablo now lined up at linebacker. If you look at it, it looks like a man match, right? So Divine Diablo comes down, looks at their running back, goes, chases him down, eliminates the option for Jacoby Brissett. He eliminates the option for Jacoby Brissett and... Shout out to LV Maximus, my guy. Happy belated birthday to my guy, LV Maximus. Just became a member of the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my brother LV and everybody in here. Please, please give my brother belated happy birthday in the chat. It was his birthday a few days ago. Was it yesterday? It was his birthday recently. Give that man some birthday love. Shout out to him for becoming a member, man. And as you guys can see, right, when you become a member, you get this fire-ass sound. Shout out to Al Davis. Commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. You will not get And guess what? The Nation. Shout out to the Nation's own again. Just another member tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you big time. Thank you for everybody who is becoming a member. I, I, I'm trying to get this technology all set up for you guys. So it's cool when you guys become a member and all that kind of stuff. So shout out to shout out to LV and the nation's own for becoming members of the channel. But let's get what do you think about Griff Papa supposedly coming back? Hey, let's do it because uh, I'm trying to hear this on Sundays. I'm trying to hear that on Sundays, man. Let's do it. Let's bring them back. Let's bring them back. But let's get back into the film study before I get carried away with all this new stuff that we got going on, man. But yes, shout out to um, Kyle Holt, LV, The Nation. We had ONT and um, what was it? Papa, Papa uh, and Nana Raiders also become members. But let's get right back into the film study here with divine diablo now you can see him again right here one-on-one -on -one, matched up against the running back does a good job of just riding him out taking him to the sideline taking that option away from jacoby Brissett. very very good job by divine diablo nothing crazy pretty goddamn good hit by jonathan abram right there to to jar that ball loose and um that was a good play that was another man-on-man -man play that I wanted to look at with you guys. And this next one here, this next one here, I really, really like it. The 31.56 and then 32.26. So there's that. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Oh, man, y'all are... Commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. You will not get it. NorCal in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, NorCal Red and Jesse, for becoming a member. It is greatly, greatly appreciated, my brother. Thank you. You guys are going crazy right now. We can't even get through the film study. Thank you, man. I appreciate all you guys for doing this. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. I appreciate every single one of you guys. But look. Take a look at this. Who is lined up at safety? Who is lined up at safety? It is Divine Diablo. And this is something to look at, right? This is something to look at because you have Divine Diablo now lined up at safety. As we know, Gus Bradley loved that cover three. He loved that cover three. So you start off with a two high safety set here um, with Divine Diablo. But then play starts. Uh-oh, what happened? The play started. And he comes down into the box. And let me tell you this, right? Nothing really happens here. Pass rush gets there. Good job, Carl Nassib. Good job, Cleveland Furrow, for getting back there on the rush. But that was the first time we saw Mr. Divine Diablo come 
come down from the safety spot. Now, after coming down from the safety spot, we see the pass rush coming through, doing big things. We love to see it, right? So he's back. Next play, back at back at safety, and we love to see that, right? Because this is what we're trying to get. This is what we're trying to read. Can can he play safety at the next level? Can he play safety at the next level? And look, in my opinion. I would have loved for him to come downhill once he saw the running back get the ball. I would have loved for him to come and shoot down this alley. And um, that's just something that I feel like with the weight that he had to put on in order to be an NFL linebacker, which is something that Richard Smith, our old linebackers coach, wanted him to do. Um, I feel like he maybe lacked some explosiveness after watching over this film before coming on here with you guys and explaining it. Right. So he got manhandled a little bit by the tight end, but nevertheless was in on the tackle and he looked OK. And again, lined up as safety with next to Trayvon Mary with Abram here in the box. And this is what you'll see quite a bit, right? You'll see this quite a bit. He comes down and look, I call this ball watching, but he did a good job taking away the crosser. And I like that. Ultimately, I like that, right? You get Denzel Perman laying the smack down on Jacoby Brissett. Up here, you have Divine Diablo making sure that the cross routes doesn't come and become a problem like it did later in the game. But nevertheless, he got, he picked up on the cross route. I think that's Jalen Waddle. So uh, very, very interesting to see that, right? Very, very interesting to see that. Now that was, that was that play. You saw him there for the first time as safety. Interesting enough, this next play, he's back at the safety spot. You guys can see him right here. And, and just take a look at what happens, right? Take a look at what happens. Go away. It is what it is. But look, but look, the whole point that we're seeing here, Abram is a, a Abram got cut up dirty. Yeah, yeah. And what I will say this, though, is that while looking at this film, there was a lot, a lot of times. Oh, hold on. My bad. Let me do something right here. I'm going to take this off so that you guys can see everything. My bad, y'all. What up, though? Sunday fun day. Yes, yes. 35. <clears throat> you got Jacoby Brissett dropping back. Boom. Good play again. He's just, at this point, he's just making sure nothing is happening. But he's lined up over the top. But Gus Bradley, he was dropping him down into that soft zone right in front of the, the deep high safety, making sure that nothing gets over the top from those linebackers. You can see that at the time, Nick Kwiatkowski was playing linebacker. So it is interesting to see how he was being used at the beginning of the season. But once they put him at the linebacker spot, he was doing just fine. He was doing his job. And then I think that was halftime. So we move on to the next uh, part of the of the film. 45 25 is the timestamp that I got. So let's go to that. And boom, where is he at now? They dropped him down from safety. Film study Sunday featuring Divine Diablo. There you go, Kyle. There you go. Now you got Divine Diablo again. We saw him on a blitz earlier on. We'll see him again on the blitz. This side, the overload is on his side. And he doesn't get back there like he did previously because the, the running back does a good job of blocking him, which is good, which is fine. Um, but the pressure, it was on Jacoby Brissett. I like that. That's good. It shows that he could be used as a blitzer. Could this be a Swiss Army knife for a guy like Patrick Graham's defense? Let me know what you guys think so far. We got a lot more film to break down. So, um. Yeah, we got a lot of plays. We got a lot, a lot of plays. Let's see. Next up, we got this one here. 45-year fan. Shout out to my brother Trevor in the building. But again, he goes down into the box, uses a blitz, and they put him back at safety. Then he goes into this sweet spot right here with the, with the uh, linebackers. And again, not a bad play. You would like for him to get his eyes out of the backfield of in this situation more. You could really tell he's just staring down Jacoby Brissett, and instead he isn't really feeling the receiver that's coming in. So that's 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 a that's not a problem, but it is something that if you're going to be a safety, you do need to get better at. Um, and you know it happens, right? It definitely definitely happens. Um, and just ball watching there, you know, it led to a 
It led to a completion. It could get better, right? It definitely could get better. Eyes is in the backfield, doesn't recognize that he has a guy coming over into his section. Definitely could improve on that aspect for sure. But, you know, week three, I think that so far with his snaps at safety, he was doing pretty decent. He was doing pretty decent for sure. But there is more film of him at the safety spot. It's not here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Am I tripping? There it is. All right. So I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this next play. You see where Divine Diablo is right here. He's not at deep, deep safety, but again, got, got, got a guy underneath his zone. You would rather him be able to come up and make that hit, make that play. But here it's just a repetition of it, you know, goes over the top and boom. That is something that I feel like we need to work on with this new defense, right? The matchups we had in week one, we saw Perryman going downfield with Sammy Watkins. So I feel like this was Gus Bradley's adjustment, putting Divine Diablo there so that the crossers and then the deep shots with the slot receivers and the tight ends wouldn't happen anymore. But ultimately, things still got by in the beginning of this game. But the last thing I want to show you guys of him against the Dolphins is uh, this play right here. This play right here against the Dolphins. This is when, in my opinion, we, we needed to do better. Because this is third. No, this is fourth and 20. This is fourth and 20. You have Divine Diablo here. This is overtime. This is overtime. We need to get off of the field and end the game. Why are we why are we not being able to get off the field here? It's beyond me. Now, when this happened in the beginning of the season, right? Um this is third and 20, you know, Max Cross makes a big play. We got to get off the field, right? We got to get off the field at this point. But look, look what happens. You got Mike Gesicki, a big 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 body just running free over here because he's again watching the backfield i'm not sure if him in the safety position just wasn't too natural for him but him in the backfield he was just having his eyes on the running back on the quarterback too often trayvon mullen makes a phenomenal play downfield there we get the pass breakup good job divine diablo gets saved there but what happens when he doesn't get saved you can't have mike gasecki running free on a crosser you cannot have that you cannot allow that with a guy like Mike Gusecki. He's a good tight end, right? Where is he? He's starting over here. Safety comes down into the comes down a little bit. Mike Gusecki again just running free and he gets beat. He gets beat. And they convert on fourth and 20 to keep the live uh keep the drive alive. Keep the drive keeping the drive alive on fourth and 20. That should be easy work easy work, right? But what I will say is that the weight that he had to put on, um, I feel like maybe messed him up in terms of his reaction time at the safety spot, which he did play quite a bit in, in, um, in college. He played quite a bit in college, but I want you guys to take a look at this, right? Now he's at linebacker. He's now at linebacker doing his job. And let me see, let you guys can tell me what you guys think, right? Here, it is against the Cleveland Browns, Nick Mullins. He is now starting at linebacker. No more safety. No more safety. He is now back at linebacker or at linebacker where we feel like he will be playing a lot of and gets just bites really, really hard on the play action. Really, really hard. Just bites extremely hard on the play action. David and Joku could have been who David and Joku would have been free for many yards if Nick Mullins would have saw that. This is this is Divine Diablo. This is the guy he should be guarding. This is the guy he should be guarding. DC is rolled into the chat. Shout out to my brother Kenny in here. You see, that's not David Njoku, but his tight end just goes right behind him. And, um, you know, could have been a, a gain of a lot, a lot of yards. Now, again, that was that was at linebacker. I want you to see another play action play at linebacker and see how he reacts after getting beat the first time and biting the first time on the play action. 
Um, it's very, very interesting to see how he reacts. So here he's at linebacker once again. Nick Mullins and the Browns are going to run a play action play. Bites hard, hard. Look at how open David and Joku is after he bites extremely hard on the play action. Thankfully, Nick Mullins throws the deep ball and uh, Brandon Faison makes a great play. But um, the the play recognition does need to be a little better, and it does get better. You'll see that in the next in the next set of uh, clips. But he bites hard. David and Joku is now just running free. Nobody near him. Nobody near him. Right. So we have to be able to fix that up. Have to be able to fix that up on the play action. But when it came down to it against the Cleveland Browns, he makes up for all of these mistakes. He makes for up for a big, big play. Derek Carr threw a pick the drive before, and he said, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands, and I'm going to make a big, big stop. This is Divine Diablo right here. They're about to get ready to pound the rock. It is third down. The Raiders are trying to get off field, and boom, blows up Andy Janovich, gets the tackle for loss, and the Las Vegas Raiders get off the field. So there's no problem with him going downfield, right? The problem may be that sometimes he bites too hard on the play action. But look, when it's not a play action, he is coming to take heads off. Comes down the hole and boom, smacks, smacks the shit out of this fullback. Gets the tackle for loss. The Las Vegas Raiders get off the field and it is looking good. And I, I just want you guys to see that from another angle. Just throws it up. Gets that tackle on Nick Chubb. Absolute great play by Divine Diablo. And I mean, that was a very important play. We were we were in a position where we could have, you know, um ended up losing because of a pick that was just thrown previously by Derek Carr earlier on on that drive. So very, very good stuff by Divine Diablo. Now, right here, he is going to be matched up against um what's his name? Austin Eckler against the Chargers. You have Divine Diablo right here. You got Austin Eckler here. This is the last week of the season. Win or go home. Last week of the season, win or go home. And the Raiders have full confidence in having Austin Eckler and uh, Divine Diablo matchup. If you remember, previously in our last matchup with them, the matchup was KJ Wright and Austin Eckler. And Austin Eckler did whatever he wanted to KJ Wright. So on this play, Austin Eckler is trying to do a quick out. Diablo's not having that great coverage. He tries to go that way. Justin Herbert underthrows it. Great coverage by Divine Diablo. You can see it again right here. Lined up on the running back. Takes good angles. Nowhere, nowhere for Justin Herbert to go. Phenomenal job by Mr. Diablo. Now, next play you got here. I think it's at 14 seconds. Yep. 14 seconds. They spread it all out. They spread it all wide. And this is something that uh, after watching this film, I'm actually pretty impressed by Gus Bradley. I didn't think he would do this. But much like we saw when we were breaking down our guy, um, Patrick Graham, this looks like a man coverage, right? You got a man over each player. You got one up, one up, one up, one up, one up. This looks like man coverage, right? But check out what Divine Diablo does. He takes that step with the tight end, comes back with the running back. That's good coverage. That is good coverage right there. Man, they were showing man, drop back into zone. Good job by Divine Diablo to lead his man, push him into a uh, Brandon face on zone. Look at, look at what he does. Pushes his guy in, face on now his guy. Rides Eckler. They get a fluke, fluke, fluke play there. You know, that I, I know all of you guys remember that. I know all you guys remember that play right there. But good job by Divine Diablo to be able to pass off his man, take on um Brandon Faison's man. And um, you know, Herbert got lucky, but when does he not get lucky? You know, when does Herbert not get lucky? I'm just hating a little bit. I'm just hating a little bit, but check out this one. Divine Diablo lined up right here. Beautiful, beautiful job. You will see Divine Diablo take away the crossing route, take away the crossing pattern, which is extremely, extremely lethal in today's game. You have crazy, crazy talent. He was lined up at the backer position, rides all his 
takes his guy for a freaking ride all the way into the 40-yard line on the other side of the field. Good job by Divine Diablo right here to do that. Take away the crossing pattern. I just want you guys to see that again, right? Divine Diablo is here. This man here will do a crosser. Check it out. None of that. None of that. Nope. Nope. That's that's not going down. That's not going down, man. Stuff Nick Chubb on that play. Great sequence on defense. Big play at that point in the game. Facts. Facts. Good, good job. Good job by Divine Diablo on this play as well. Taking away um, the crossing route. But look at what Divine Diablo is able to do now against the run. Divine Diablo is somebody that's going to consistently develop with the Las Vegas Raiders in good coaching, right? So now Divine Diablo, Denzel Perryman, this is your nickel defense. You need to be able to stop the run in your nickel defense on first down if they're going to go for it, right? If they're going to go for a run on first down, they need to do it. It looks like Divine Diablo reads it. He gets back there, stuffs the run. Good play. I think that this was maybe Divine Diablo watching film and he recognized something because look at how eager he was to come down. He came down really, really quick, stop, stuffs Eckler, stopping the run. Great job by Divine Diablo. Him and Quinn Jefferson just bullying people. I absolutely love it. And then he does it on the next play. On the very next play, he does it again. Divine Diablo doing a good job taking away his, his um, players. Good job. Good job by Diablo. Got to be able to stop the run, even though this is a pass-heavy league, but you still got to be able to stop the run. And he does it again. He does it again here. You can see it. I fast forward a little bit too far. Fast forward a little bit too much. But again, he's about to get this, stops the run again. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job by him being able to come downhill, shed a blocker, make the stop. Great, great job. Now, take a look. Take a look at what he's about to do here, right? After he gets a good play stopping the run, after he gets a good play stopping the run, he recognizes that the tight end is releasing. He recognizes that the tight end is releasing and he stops the tight end release. This could have went for a lot of yards. This could have went for a lot of yards. He makes it look as if though he's going to block down on Max Crosby and doesn't work, so he tries to come off, give an option for Herbert. Divine Diablo is all over it. Nothing, 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 nothing at all. I think this is a very, very underrated play from Divine Diablo, who just had to read the pass or read the run and stop the pass, something that he had problems with earlier on the season that we were just looking at with Cleveland, right? So he comes downhill as if it was the run, sees that this blocker didn't doesn't do a good job on Max Crosby, comes by, stops that. Very, very good job by Divine Diablo there. And then, you know, the rest of the drive, he, he ends up just doing a pretty decent job for the rest of this drive, right? It's not his zone. He still goes over, makes the tackle. He still goes over, makes the tackle. Divine Diablo did a pretty good job. It looks like there was even some communication errors there as well. Um, but nonetheless, you know, he makes a tackle. You want to be able to do that. Nate Hobbs should have been able to make that tackle, um, you know, on the first on the first try. But it is what it is. Divine Diablo helps out. And I think this play, yeah, this play ends up going for six, right? This play ends up going for six. But we 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 still got to look at this play. Divine Diablo was an inch close of stopping Eckler there to uh to sealing sealing up that drive. That would have been very 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 good. But we're not gonna give them any free shout outs. <laughs> we're not gonna give them any free shout outs. Fuck the Chargers. Fuck them. But on this play here, the next play you see Divine Diablo is lined up. Middle linebacker, watch what he does. Watch what he does. Again, just like the other one where the tight end released, he sees Derek Jared Cook about to release, takes away the option for Justin Herbert. They still catch the ball on Desmond Trufant. That was just a freaking trend at the end of the season, right? But again, you see Jared Cook right here. Divine Diablo's here. Divine Diablo is going to pick up on that, right? Reads him, makes sure that he has no option to throw the ball to Jared Cook. You know, fucking Desmond Trufant. God damn it, man. God damn it, man. And then 
right here. Next play. This is something that I really, really like to see from Divine Diablo, right? Good hands, punches the center in the face, was ready to get off the block and make the tackle if he needed. But KJ Wright does a good job and makes the tackle. But look at how Divine Diablo makes impact with the center as soon as the center tries to go up to the second level. Hits him, ready to get off the block. KJ Wright does a damn good job, but Divine Diablo was free to make that tackle. Very, very good job. Now, the last play I want to show you is pretty interesting because it shows how much, how much I feel like Patrick Graham will use Divine Diablo. Because look at this. If Gus Bradley was able to do this, what do you think that a guy like Patrick Graham will do? Divine Diablo is here, lined up again over Austin Eckler. It looks like it's going to be man, right? What does he do? He comes downhill as if he's going to blitz. He ends up taking on the guard. He sees that there's nothing over here for, for Herbert. You know, I think that's face on, comes down, gets the, get the running back, drops back. Looks like he was going to do a QB spy, and um, ultimately the play didn't work, right? Comes down as if he's going to blitz. Ultimately, it does not work anyways. Very good job by Divine Diablo. But honestly, honestly, I really, really, really have to say that my favorite play from Divine Diablo here is when he's able to take away the crossing pattern. Taking away the crossing pattern in the NFL is going to be very, very big. Very, very big. Divine Diablo being able to drop back, take away the cross of this, trying to attack the you know, the weakness of the cover three. He comes in, does a very, very good job here. I, I, this is one of my favorite plays from, honestly. Flips the hips, drops back. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job by Divine Diablo. Let me know what you guys think, man. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have a favorite play by Divine Diablo from what I just shown? I think ultimately from what we saw here, from what we saw in week three, from what we saw in week three to now in that last game of the season, I think the Divine Diablo is better off playing linebacker. I think he's better off playing linebacker. You know, there's times where it just looks like he's ball watching at the safety position. It just didn't really look too natural, right? It didn't really look too natural. It didn't look like the same Divine Diablo from West Virginia. It looked like a linebacker that was trying to play safety. Right, it looked like a guy that didn't really know when and how to react to, you know, the 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 safety position. Right, it's it takes a different kind of skill. But that is it for the Divine Diablo film breakdown. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you want to see him at the safety spot? There was a lot of plays of him at safety, a lot of plays at him at safety, and I think ultimately the one that kind of not worries me, but where he thinks that uh, he needs to be at. The reason why I think that he needs to be at the linebacker spot is week three, fourth and 20, and we give up a huge, huge play to Mike Gusecki on a play that should have been over, should have been over. That can't happen. Um, Kyle says, I agree, and he made big plays at the linebacker position. That's where he should be, in my opinion. That's where he should be. And Ultimately, one of the reasons why I really wanted to bring you guys this video today and not later on is because shout out to Sanjeet. I think he put up a video where he was explaining how when when we're looking at OTAs, it's looking like Divine Diablo is not the starting um, is not with the starting group. I think that this guy right here can be a starting linebacker in the NFL. Now, um, if the Raiders are putting Jayon Brown and Denzel Perryman as the two starters, well, I think that's a very, very good group too. But very, very, very good job from Divine Diablo at linebacker. He's better at linebacker. Keep him there. I agree. I agree, Anthony. I agree 150%. 150%. 100%. I agree. I think you're right. I definitely, definitely think you're right. But you know what? It's weird that he seems more natural at linebacker, even though he just converted to it. I think it is kind of weird, too. But Tavio, I think it's more because of the weight that he had to put on. I think it's more because of the weight that he had to put on in the NFL. I think that that kind of uh, didn't let him translate back to safety 
as as well. I think it was the weight that he had to put on. Shout out to Justin says, what's up, Andy? I just got my Diablo uh, jersey for my birthday on the 18th. Let's go. Shout out to Justin. He got his Divine Diablo jersey. And look, check this one out. I had to do this film study because, look, we got Divine Diablo signature too, man. Where the fuck is it at? Right here. There you go. You got Divine Diablo signature right there too. So I had to do that for sure. What about... What I like about Diablo is his recognition at linebacker, not a specific play. He and Hobbs will be our difference makers in the season. That's why I really, really was stuck on that play where he took away the crossing pattern. Um, I think that's really, really impressive. I really think that that's extremely, extremely impressive for a guy who just converted to the position to be able to have the play recognition to take away a crossing pattern. Um, I, I think that that's going to be very, very, very good for the Las Vegas Raiders defense. So I hope that Patrick Graham um, utilizes him more as a linebacker, uh, as a blitzing linebacker as well, because he has some pretty good blitzes from what we saw. Um, and ultimately, he may not be a tight end eraser, but each time that he matched up on the running back, he did a pretty damn good job. I heard that Divine Diablo is currently hurt. Is that true? I have not heard that Divine Diablo is hurt. I hope he is not hurt at all. I hope he's not fucking hurt. I hope not. GA says, damn, I'm late. Was good, Andy? The good thing, GA, is that I didn't want to make this one too, too long, right? I had a few, few plays right here. Uh, wrote down the timestamps and all that good stuff. So for, for people that want to be able to go back and watch this one, it's not an hour and 30 minutes long like the other one. It's I think it's like 29 minutes of true just film. Um, so GA, if you want to go back and look at it, it will be there for you. But um, listen, you guys, like I was just saying, I don't want to make this one an hour and 30 minutes long for those who came in late and, and want to be able to um, watch this. The playback, very very, very good. Um, very good watch, in my opinion. I think that everybody should, uh, if they can, take their time to go and watch this one. But listen, you guys, um, I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your fire hat, my guy. Appreciate you, guy. Appreciate you, my guy. Let Divine Diablo get some hybrid work. I feel like you can be an asset in both areas. D. From what I've heard, from what I've heard, um, shout out to our brother Raider Scout. It's looking like Isaiah Polamau is doing pretty damn good in camp right now. It's looking like Isaiah Polamau is doing pretty damn good in camp right now. So hopefully we can find ourselves um, a little sneaky undrafted gem there, man. But let me ask you guys this before I go. Let me ask you guys this. Who is, who is the next film session going to be on this one was a little bit um it was a little bit more crazier because we had all the all the um all the uh people who decided to become a member so it was a lot of notifications earlier on but um it was a little interrupted earlier on but shout out to everybody but who is the next film study on who is the next film study on and if you do want to become a member that is the link right there it's in the chat if you want to become a member you can uh, join that way. There's a bunch of different uh, little perks, a bunch of different um, emojis that you can get. You have Al Davis and um, you got a bunch. You got Al Davis, Devontae Adams, John Madden. And then as we have more members, I get to add many, many more emojis. So very, very good. Anthony Averett, Malcolm Kuntz, Leatherwood. Look, I would love to do an offensive line film breakdown. I would love to do that. I think the two that people would enjoy the most would be an Andre James and an Alex Leatherwood. Not sure if you do college much, but I'd love to see Paul Mal. EJ, check out um, Raider Films. Check out Raider Films. He dropped one on Raider Films uh, on Isaiah Paul Mal. He dropped one on Isaiah Paul Mal. Yeah, but I'm not. I, I don't. I don't have access to college. I would if I could. If I did. Peace out. Shout out to my brother, Kenny. Have a blessed day, my brother. Great live. Thank you, Parham. That's college. That's college. Unless you got film of him in camp. <laughs> Fuck it. Do both uh, Leatherwood and, and Andre. That'd be tough. That'd be tough to do them both. <laughs> That'd be tough. Let's see. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. 
for sure. I'm subbed to them. I will go check them out. Good looking out. Fire film study. Thank you, man. Perryman? You want to do a Perry? You want me to do a Perryman one? He's a baller. He's a pro bowler. He's a pro bowler. I think per Perryman needs no introduction. Perryman needs no introduction, man. Andre, look, I was thinking of doing one on Deron Harmon or Malcolm Coombs. Deron Harmon, we recently picked him up, so that's why I wanted to see what he could bring at the safety position, or I wanted to bring one of Malcolm Coombs. Malcolm Coombs would be very, very interesting. I love doing the defense ones, man. I love doing the defense ones. Shout out to my brother, uh, LV, man. I hope you have a blessed day. Hope you have a blessed day. And again, if you guys haven't, give my brother some belated bir uh, happy birthdays in the chat, man. Um, I'm cooking up that guy outside right now. There you go. Uh, can you do Mary? He's going to do a ball hawk. You know, I want to do ones on underrated guys, you know? I want to do ones on underrated guys. Good choices. Yeah, I think Deron Harmon or Malcolm Coons would be solid. Uh, maybe a Jayon Brown. Or, I mean, unless you guys want. Unless you guys want, we could we could rock out and go on the offensive line. You know me. I'm all for going on the offensive line, man. I'm all for it. Shout out to my brother Graf in the building. Shout out to my brother Graf in the building. Later, Andy Film study Mullen. Mmm. That'd be interesting. I could get some film of Mullen um, from earlier on in the season. I could see. Yeah, shout out to Egalitarian, man. Let's see. Colton. Colton Miller. Colton Miller. That man don't need no film study, man. Come on, dog. Does Jayon Brown have a lot of film? Jayon Brown has a ton of film, EJ. Jayon Brown has been a starter for the Tennessee Titans for the last, like, three, four seasons. He's been a starter for the last six, uh, three, four seasons. Mullins looked good since the Steelers game. Yeah, Mullins, well, he got that interception in the Steelers game, right? He, he, he got that interception in the Steelers game, right? Commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. You will not get Shout out to GA Patriot for becoming a member, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to GA. And yes, you heard it right. That was Al Davis. That's the noise that happens each time somebody becomes a member. And, um, all that shit, man. So if you if you if you want to become a member, there's a bunch of perks, man. Um, it's something you don't have to become one at all, but it's just something extra for the channel, man. So um, shout out to G A for becoming a member of the channel. And he says, Legends Al Davis. Hey, you peeped it, right? You peeped it. Yes. Shout out to you. Hey, G A, real quick, throw up because because now you'll have now you'll have um access to an Al Davis emoji. If you go into your um, emoji right before you um, click, right before you click um, in your comments, right before you're about to make a comment, you'll be able to have an Al Davis emoji and a John Madden one too. Sh show, show them what they're rocking with, man. <laughs> uh, Jayon Brown is a guy that I had that has never been on my radar. Not going to not gonna lie, I don't know much about him. No, Jayon Brown has been a baller. He's been a baller. Um, I'm not too oh legends the oh there you go, there you go. Wait, are you are you guys able to see that in the chat? The emoji. Yeah, you guys are able to see it. That's what I like. That's what I that's what I like to see. <laughs> Put the pause one up, Jayon Brown. Yeah, so you guys can see that, right? You guys can see that. In the chat, you guys could see uh, the emoji that he just put up. Shout out to GA Patriot, man. That's dope. That's dope. But listen, you guys, I don't want to hold you guys here too much longer. I hope all you guys have a blessed rest of your weekend. Have a phenomenal, phenomenal day. I hope you guys have a great time spending it with your family. And um, as always, you guys, stay blessed. I love you guys. Take care. And um, enjoy this fire ass outro, man, by Digital Press. Welcome to the Death Star, where our opponent's dreams.